Hello and welcome to a new season of Breaking Out of the Bubble. I'm your host for the night, Carson Bailey. Breaking Out of the Bubble is a Student Broadcast Association production here at Hanover College. We bring you the stories both inside and outside of the bubble, and tonight we're really breaking out of the bubble. Recently, I covered a difficult situation we had here in town as an infamous hate group rallied in Madison, Indiana. In Madison, Indiana, what was supposed to be a weekend of fun and art turned into a nightmare for both the police and the citizens of the small town. Hundreds of people from the Madison area showed up on the weekend of the Chautauqua Art Festival to protest against a notorious hate group, the Ku Klux Klan. The KKK filed a permit to hold a rally in Madison. This caused controversy both among Jefferson County's residents and students. Four weeks before the rally, the community of Jefferson County debated whether what the KKK would say is protected by freedom of speech and how they would react to it. There were several different opinions on the subject, with some feeling the KKK had the right to talk, while others felt their hate speech would be better left unsaid. I think once that hate speech is starting to spew, the right to freedom of speech should be denied, because that is limiting people's... Um, right to a free and just society. As the day of the art fair came closer and closer, the community prepared by coming together to talk about the things that would play out. At Hanover College, several guest speakers from the policemen to city officials came to inform the students about the rally. This weekend, I do not plan on going to Madison because it's a little scary and I do not want to get hurt. Although some would not go to the protest, Others felt it was necessary to go and show the Ku Klux Klan that they were not welcome in Madison. On a sunny Saturday morning, hundreds of people showed up to protest against the KKK's presence in Madison. Dozens of police officers surrounded the area where the KKK spoke but several other groups were present at the rally to counter protest and to share their beliefs. The Tri-State Freethinkers, Panthers United from Hanover College, and lastly, Jefferson County United were the three main groups to appear at the rally. The Tri-State Freethinkers advocate for science-based decision-making. They fight for equal rights and separation of church and state. Uh, we're letting people know they're not alone. And we're, we're bringing the message that this is a Christian hate group. And anytime we find such things, whether it would be the KKK, the Ark Encounter Not Discriminate, or people trying to shut down women's health care, or not let gay people be married, the tri-state freethinkers are there with our voice saying discrimination is never okay, especially when it's done under religious guise. Residents of Madison, Hanover, and Jefferson County made up the Jefferson County United. These community members wanted to get out the message that Jefferson County does not welcome racist sentiments. This is an inclusive community. We won't get in arguing matches with the Klan or their supporters. We will not do that. We won't try to shout over them or drive them away. We won't respond to heckling. We commit ourselves to Dr. Martin Luther King's principles of nonviolence. We'll do some singing and we'll do some chanting to keep our spirits up. There's going to be great music playing that's all about love and peace and consideration and forgiveness. Panthers United was made up of Hanover College students. Their goal was to remind people that the KKK has a history of hatred and violence against minorities. Yeah, well, we wanted to, a lot of us wanted to keep our distance especially to make sure that everything remained peaceful and we got what we wanted to say in. Our tactics were to make sure that we know what they talked about. We just remembered that when going up to approach them so that we didn't get too heated or anything, and we remained calm. The KKK walked through the large wave of protesters and began setting up a little before noon. I think we surprised some folks. We're not hiding our faces today. We are not hiding our faces today. The Klan advertised as being out in the open, but some KKK members still wore masks and uniforms. I would like to start off with uh, thanking our military today. The KKK began their anti-drug rally with a prayer and the Pledge of Allegiance. However, many people there did not fall for this attempt to act inclusive. We ask you, Lord, to please 
watch over every single one of us. No matter what color you are, no matter who you are. The rally went right away into an anti-bullying message. We are here to tell you that the time is now to fight back with knowledge and to stand up to these bullies in your schools, even if it means to fight back by kicking their asses old school style. This sort of ranting was nothing new to a veteran who had been to two other KKK rallies in his lifetime. So if they just stick to that topic or crime, great. But I'm pretty sure, from what I've known before, they won't. They'll go off topic. As predicted, the rally's topic quickly changed again and again usually into rants about politics and alleged problems with America. And take back the country that you are losing. The KKK's rally against racial preferences and bullying was ended with a somewhat threatening message about the strength and power the KKK still has. We will not stop. The plan is going to rise like never before. Although many people were outraged by the KKK's presence and messages, others supported the Klan's rights to free speech. You know, they have just as much rights you guys have interviewed me. They have every right to speak, whether they, I agree with their points or not. Although the KKK has a constitutional right to hold a rally, protesters decided to use their rights of free speech to drown out the group's messages. When the KKK tried to speak, Jefferson United played music to override the Klan. And when they tried to discuss their All Lives Matter movement, Panthers United chanted Black Lives Matter. The protesters were able to protest in a forceful and effective, yet non-violent way. We are still Jefferson County. The consensus from the community is that everyone has the freedom of speech, and that the KKK should at least be allowed to give their opinion. However, the residents of Madison have also made it clear that they have the right to stand up against the hate speech of the Klan. It was a very peaceful rally and they could not have been happy with the outcome. The protesters made their voices heard. The protest was non-violent but effective. The Klan gave up. They left 30 minutes before the rally was supposed to be over and the protesters felt empowered. I feel uh, relieved that it's over and I feel vindicated because I think that we were right. It was a tense time, but we're glad it all worked out all right. Going back inside the bubble, everyone has their own unique story and lives, and the Hanover students are no different. Students from the media writing class have 30 seconds to share an impactful moment from their lives. Piercing screams filled my ears and my heart raced as we click, click, clicked our way up Apollo's chariot. This was my first roller coaster ride and my stomach was doing backflips. I told my brother I loved him, but he just glanced over and rolled his eyes. He wasn't aware. I really thought we were going to die on this ride. The first drop made my stomach hit rock bottom. I knew I had made a big mistake. I hate drops. I hate that ride. Never again. The 27th of February, 2010, I thought I was going to die. I thought it would be another calm and unexciting night for an ordinary 16-year-old, but I was wrong. 3.34 in the morning, I am woken up by a tremor, which I disregard. Then, as I am ready to resume my sleep, my father charges into my room, yelling, Wake up, son, it's a big one. As he pushes me against the frame of the door, the minor tremor was minor no more. Three and a half minutes later, I was physically and mentally exhausted. I survived the sixth biggest earthquake in recorded history, and I recall it as vividly as yesterday. It's taken four years to be able to laugh about my high school prom. It was my junior year, and I had picked out the perfect red dress, which felt like smooth silk. I had my best friends by my side, and I couldn't wipe the excited smile off my face. Then, out of nowhere, we heard and felt a crash which felt like two tons smashing into our bodies as a car crashed into ours. We sat in silence with our eyes wide open and unfocused. The realization of what just happened sunk in and we all began calling our parents frantically. Police sirens blared as they approached the scene and our prom pictures were delayed forever. 
We ended up making it to the event and on the news. Out of all the places to get lost, I was stuck on a mountain in Europe. One summer I got to explore and a hiking trail and hear it with my friends. I took a wrong turn though and wound up on a much more dangerous part of the mountain away from the others. Realizing what happened, I began to turn around when part of the trail came out from underneath me. I fell into a huge thorn bush and was waist deep in thorns. After clawing my way out, I had to walk back several miles to the train station. I was sweaty, bleeding and exhausted, but eventually I was reunited with my friends. On Friday nights, as a football player, the field is supposed to be bright with light. During a game my senior year, the bright lights went black. On the play that I cannot recall to this day, I made the tackle, knocked out cold, followed by a three minute seizure. All the fans of both teams went into shock. I started to come back to my senses, hearing the loud sirens coming my way. Laying on the ground, still as a rock, the ambulance doors open. I could hear the cheers of the fans. We pulled out of the stadium, speeding to the hospital like a NASCAR. We arrived to the hospital where I was rushed to the emergency room for a night full of medical testing. Luckily, results came back and only diagnosed me with a concussion. I rushed out of my door every night the week of Big Little Reveal. I hid in a basement while someone left gifts at my door. Each long night was spent guessing like a kid on Christmas. I was giving clues during this time, but they couldn't be reliable. My future Big didn't want me to know right away who she was. This just added to my anticipation. After all my wondering, my name was called up, my heart pounding in my chest. There in front of me was my Big, who would be guiding me through this amazing sisterhood I had become a part of. There was a standoff in the kitchen. My parents faced my younger brother across the breakfast table. My father's fists were balled tightly. My mother shook her head with disapproval, but my brother had a small smirk on his face. He threw his newly tattooed arm on the table to flaunt it. It was a foot long and half sleeve of Pink Floyd's most notable album cover. A psychedelic rainbow covered the majority of his arm. My parents began to scold and my brother's smirk quickly diminished. Although his punishment would be severe, I knew I'd be off the hook for a while. What seemed like the best idea quickly crashed into the worst idea, literally. It started with the run of the mill Friday night drive for smoothies. 15 minutes later, my friend ran a red light and smashed into a blue, blue Buick. 30 minutes later, a paramedic told me I had the smallest neck he'd ever seen while fitting me for a brace. Four hours later, I exited the hospital with an aching neck sprain as a parting gift. It's easy to laugh about this today, however, that night was terrifying. Lesson learned, choose your adventures wisely. When I was five, I thought I was gonna be eaten by an alligator. I was on vacation with my family in Florida and we decided to spend the day at an alligator farm. The day was good until we went to the white alligator habitat. The alligator was in a 10 foot deep enclosure surrounded by an observation deck. As I was looking at the alligator, two hands picked me up and held me over the pit. As I was brought back to safety, tears were brought to my eyes and I saw that my dad was the one holding me. For the rest of the day, I stayed latched to my mom's legs and wouldn't let my dad come near me. Now that's some good parenting. Next, we're going to continue hearing the stories from inside the bubble as we send it over to the Triangle editor, Caroline Beck, with our campus news. Thanks Carson. Here are a few of the stories we're working on at the Hanover Triangle newspaper, which can be read at blogs.hanover.edu forward slash triangle. First, clown sightings. Clown sightings have been happening all over the United States. Now they've reached Hanover's campus. Early in October, a few students called into campus safety saying they had spotted a few people dressed up as clowns in front of Donner and Crow. No clowns have have been officially caught, but some theories have been put forward by student life. We explore some of these theories in our online Triangle newspaper. Some departments could be losing some full-time teaching positions, while others gain faculty. The Program and Position Review Committee, which, has, which is made of four faculty members, has recently finished making recommendations to President Lambert. The PPRC received proposals from nine different departments. A final decision, decision from Lambert and Dean Steve Job is expected soon. We'll have all the details in the triangle when the announcement is made public. Someone took down the welcome banners in Donner and Ide Hall several weeks ago. The college sent out an email threatening to charge the cost of the banners to everyone residing in those buildings. The signs were later returned and nobody was charged. Finally, student abroad 
options have increased on campus. Now, in addition to the traditional semester programs to Turkey, Belgium, Australia, France, Mexico, and Spain, 11 new countries have been added. Now, Hanover students can study in Korea, China, Thailand, India, South Africa, Ghana, Norway, and Sweden, just to name a few. Go to blogs.hanover.edu forward slash triangle to learn more about all the programs. All the stories and more are available at Hanover Triangle. Back to you, Carson. Thanks, Caroline. In other news, Hanover College's television is working on a new show starring freshman Savannah Robison and a few unusual friends. We've got your first look. Welcome to Safari Savannah. I'm Savannah Robinson, and I'm so excited that you're joining us today. This is Stephon Johnson here at the Cliffy Nature Center. Thank you so much for being on the show. Uh, well, it's a pleasure to be here. So it looks like we have a guest with us today. We do. Uh, this is a painted turtle. And looks like she's pretty excited right now. I hope you join us next time when we embark on our next adventure. I'm Savannah Robinson, and I'm Safari Savannah. Thank you for watching. I can't wait to see more from Savannah's new show. We'll keep you posted on where and when Savannah Safari will be aired. But now, Hanover freshman Kelly Poston is going to show us the do's and don'ts of fall fashion. Hello everyone, I'm Kelly Poston and welcome to Clothing with Kelly. During the month of October, I have seen fashion pop just like the trees. Three Hanover students in particular have set the bar for fashion trends here at Hanover. First, we have Leah Tower. She's rocking deep red lipstick with a canary yellow skirt. To pull her entire outfit together, she adds a white blouse, black tights, and a brown lace-up shoes. This whole outfit works together because you are bringing in a lot of neutral colors with a little splash of color. This outfit always flatters Leah's hourglass body type by having a skirt end right at her waist. Next, we have Anna Owens. She is wearing an olive green jacket over a patterned sweater, which complements her brown combat boots. Adding tights under shorts shows off Anna's legs, making her look taller. Anna also wears smoky eye makeup to add to the dark tone look. Last, we have Dara Smith. She is wearing a purple floor skull tee with matching combat boots. These colors work well with Dara's fair skin and light blonde hair color. Purple also stands out during the fall because most trees turn a bright orange. Because these colors are opposite on the color spectrum, they create different values when viewed together. As you can see, fall brings out comfortable clothing that not only looks fashionable, but also keeps you warm. You have two options during the leaf changing season. Blending colors with your surroundings like yellow, brown, or green, or picking colors that contrast the leaves to add a little extra pop. I'm Kelly Poston, and thank you for tuning in with Clothing with Kelly. Back to you, Carson. Thanks, Kelly. Well, that's all we have to cover within and out of the bubble tonight. We'll see you next time on Breaking Out of the Bubble.